In order for a company to find out what kind of external funds it may need, um, it has to perform financial planning. Financial planning is a formal process of clearly listing out what a company's projection is in terms of its revenue and its cost. A lot of times financial planning starts with sales projections. And then from this point on, oftentimes a firm will use a pro forma financial statements to help it identify what its future revenue and cost will be. So pro forma financial statements has the same layout as a standard financial statement. So you have the same layout as a balance sheet, same layout as a, an income statement, but they will be called pro forma because they do not reflect actual historic data, but these are ex estimates. So sales projection oftentimes will, will be based on historic data. You may plan a 2% growth or a dollar amount um, and oftentimes you may also look at uh, potential variations so you may you may have a sales projection for next year to be eight hundred thousand dollars and your projection may also include a variance of plus minus ten percent or plus minus twenty percent once you have um, and this typically this process will involve all the the entire company. So to determine a sales projection, you involve the marketing team, the sales team, and um, when you create performance statement, you also involve uh, production and to ident uh, and engineering to identify potential cost. So uh, doing financial planning is a very comprehensive process. Once you have identified sales projection, when you create your performer statements, you need to identify which item on the income statement and on the balance sheet will vary with sales. And again, here, um, the work that we have done earlier becomes very valuable. The items that will vary with sales, you already have those percentages. So when we computed the common size statements, we can use that information here as well. So for example, cost of goods sold is a very common cost item that we assume will change with sales. So we, what we will need if we want to do projection is that we will need to compute cost of goods sold as a percentage of sales. And we already have that information when we compute our common size statement. So a lot of the work that we have done can be used here as well for financial planning. So if we have computed the common size statement, we already have the cost of goods sold percentage. But then not all items will vary, of will vary with sales. There are other items that may vary with other factors. For example, the amount of tax that you will pay will depends on taxable income. And the key here is that once you identify what the dependent variable is, then you can figure out what the uh, appropriate um, uh, factor to use. So again, you know, we know that tax depends on taxable income. In fact, we know exactly what the tax rate is. We have learned this. We learned the concept of marginal tax rate. So if we know what the projected taxable income is, we can look up the relevant tax rate and then use the tax rate to help us compute the projected future tax liability. And another example will be interest expense. Interest expense typically varies depending on how much you borrow. So if you know that the, you, the interest rate is likely going to be, say, 5%, and you borrow $100,000, you can estimate what the interest expense is. So if something that I want to really emphasize in doing financial planning is rather than really do not memorize any formulas because you want to use common sense and your business wisdom when you do financial planning. So if you know that interest rate is 5% and you borrow $100,000, what is your interest expense? Again, that doesn't require a formula, but rather requires common sense. So with each income statement item, the key is finding the relevant information and then estimating what the actual dollar value is. One more thing that I want to uh, bring into um, 
focus is the non-cash expense. Uh, one very important non-cash expense is depreciation. Depreciation is a non-cash expense, but it is a taxable our tax deductible expense. So we can reduce our tax liability, we'll reduce our taxable income when we use depreciation. And depreciation depends on fixed assets. So if in your financial planning, you decided that your company is gonna, is gonna build a new factory and will acquire a lot of fixed assets. You, your depreciation will then depend on these future fixed assets that you plan to acquire, not the fixed assets that you have currently in existence. So that's very important. Next, once you have the income statement completed, we'll look, in, we'll look at the balance sheet items. So again, we are gonna use the same, we're gonna ask the same question. So what I'm gonna go through in this exercise is really making sure that you're asking the right question. Um, since we start with sales projections as our financial planning, you want to ask the, the question you want to ask is which balance sheet items will vary with sales? Um, for example, on the asset side, most of the time current asset is likely going to vary with sales, especially accounts receivable, those are credits that you grant to customers, and inventory. Next, we're gonna look at borrowing. Do we want to maintain the current debt ratio? Do we want to borrow more money? Do we want to lower our leverage? So all those are important decisions that a company make. So once a company decided on how much money we need to borrow, then you look at the projected future net income and decide what your dividend policy is going to be. How much of the expected future net income do you want to pay out as dividend? Once you have answered all these questions, then you will be able to, uh, you will know exactly how much external funds, external funds here means new equity you will need. So we start with sales projection. We analyze each cost item. And we also analyze um, what kind of asset will, will, will be needed to finance that level of sales. So here there may be some iterations. So for example, you may have to look at fixed assets. Do I need to buy more asset in order to reach that sales projection? If the answer is yes, then your asset level may impact your depreciation expense. So financial planning is oftentimes an iterative process. It's not a one-time calculation. You may have, you may go through the first round and then you may find out that the amount of money you need, the external fund you need is too high. Then you may need to revise down your sales projection. So you may, instead of making a, a huge expansion next year, you may want to have a phase in expansion. So this is a business strategy. And what we are doing in financial planning is marrying our business strategy to financial data. So to summarize, we have introduced many uses for financial statement. And hopefully you, uh, in addition to getting a better understanding with financial statement, you are also um, now find that is very valuable to have a good understanding of it because it has many, many uses. Uh, for internal users, performance evaluation, um, that's important. And a lot of times um, that also factors into the compensation um, and incentive scheme for management. Um, very important for internal users and managers is using financial statements for, to help them plan for the future. So we can use it to help us estimate what our future cash flow is. It also is important for us to have a very clear idea and in fact is a very explicit and articulated relationship between income statement and balance sheet items. So what I mean by that is for example, if you look at total asset turnover, we are very clear about how much sales can our current total asset support. You can ask, so we, we you, again, I want to go back to the limo CMAG uh, example. It's a very simple business idea, but it makes it very concrete that in order to generate X level of sales, you must have 
a certain amount of asset in place. So assets can be a constraint to revenue. If you don't have enough equipment, if you don't have enough manpower, you will not be able to uh, support the business. So this is a necessary investment. Uh, very important to to uh, keep in mind is that financial planning is much, much more an act than a science. The important part in financial planning is asking the right question. And the numbers you get, of course, is important, but they are actually less important relative to the insight that you can obtain as part of the planning process. Because by having to put down every single variable in numbers, when we conduct financial planning, we cannot sweep under the important questions. Every single question needs to be answered and they have to be answered thoroughly. And in that process, you gain a lot of insight and knowledge about the firm. In addition to management inter and internal users, uh, financial statement analysis is also very useful for external constituents. Uh, if you work for a bank, um, you have probably seen financial statements from businesses. So cre creditors oftentimes require to see financial statements before they grant credit. Uh, that includes your supplier um, and also sometimes you're a big customer. A, a big customer before they sign on a multi-year contract may want to demand to see your um, financial statement to make sure that you will be around to support your product. And of course, stockholders. One last thing about financial uh, ratios. In order for you to um, make sense of the numbers you know we say is the number two is is if is a current ratio too high enough or is that too low they need to be compared in context so uh, one is doing a time analysis so this is evaluating having the ratios for the same company over time and both external users and internal users who find that very, very useful to see it, how the firm's performance has changed over time. And the other is to compare it to the industry average or compare it to its competitors. Um, one tool that is useful to, um, to find and identify competitor is to look at industry codes. So NIAS stands for North America Industry Classification Standard codes so all the all, and these are six digit codes so you will find that for example all restaurants have the same four digit code and then the last two digit will separate them into fast food fast food restaurants or family restaurant or casual dining restaurant so it's very helpful for you to identify its competitors this concludes the discussion on financial statements